officially there are currently one million Swissies in the US who actually believe they made the United States of America and even call the US their Swiss property and calling it the Helvetica Americana Yeah, well, the uh, Helvetica Americana, so here's the Swiss center of North America from the Swiss belt. Well, this looks like Mr. Hitler, doesn't it? And here with a sort of a swastika. Well, these are the kind of people, you know, that, you know, that, that are on all key positions in the U.S. And they call the U.S. their property. They made the U.S. Huh. I put all the links in, and yeah, I put this all in the in the links under the under the film. So here you can read the entire article. Of course, written by a uh, Swiss American. There are quite a lot in New York as well. So that one, 2009. So don't think they will write things that might be negative for them, yeah? But anyway, there are some things we can find out, some things here. So this was on SwissInfo.ch. CH is the, the name for Switzerland, for Confederatia Helvetica. Uh, that's why it said uh, Hel Helveticana Americana. Yeah. That this is the Swiss name for the US. Why well, isn't that charming? You didn't know that yet, did you? So, here's an article also in Swiss Info by a Swissy in, of course, the Swiss belt in Illinois. Mr. Schelbert. Schelbert. Leo Schelbert. I am, I am the American. Well, not really. <laughs> Yeah, it says one million. How how Swiss are the one million Americans with Swiss ancestry? Well, very Swiss, I tell you. Very incredibly Swiss, but they won't tell you. Put in the link for you. According to my calculations, there are at least 20 million Swissies in the US. But even 1 million of them, going after all the key positions, can hold the entire nation by the balls. Just as Swissie did in Nazi Germany. So officially, that is at least one Swissie on 215 Americans. And in the Swiss belt, Missouri, there would be one Swissie on about 10 Americans all going for the police, army, judiciary and politics, leading to an all swiss Nazi Templar occupying the population in Ferguson, gunning down Americans for no reason at all, and then lie about it. So here you can see, this is a Swiss officer, you can see his Swiss, the Swiss Templar cross here, how they're going to uh, take over the world. So here... Well, this is North and South Carolina, where they went to in the beginning, and uh, where, you know, Philly, Swiss Philly as Walder was with uh, Albert Pike. So, <laughs> why do you think the arrow is here? And here's the dollar. It means they're going to they're gonna kill the dollar first to take over the, uh, the United States. Well, and that's what they did with the Swiss banks. And here, it's about the euro. Well, Switzerland is always about money. And here, Africa. How are they going to kill Africa? Well, here's the, uh, the, the exact area where Ebola is, and this is about Russia. Two arrows going from here to here. Well, what does that mean? Well, I told that there's a very large fifth column of Swiss sleeper agents in Russia. I will show you the whole article now. Here's the entire article on a website uh, for Swiss officers like this guy here. It's called Offizier dot ch uh, there you go 
Oh, of course, Swiss America trading again, the ones who went uh, where, where Bill Cooper went in bed to, with Offiziera.ch. CH for Switzerland. There's a lot of interesting things here. Yeah, about Korea, you know. Well, their man, you know, or the, the dictator of North Korea, well, he spent this time in Swiss. He's a Swiss sleep agent, as I showed in my other videos. Well, I'll put in the link for you. I executed Michael Brown in 2014 in Ferguson with six bullets in the back because he ran away with his hands in the air. And they assassinated Kajimi Powell with 12 bullets in his chest for the opposite reason. Because he slowly approached the police killers. So maybe some, someone can make up his mind here and tell us what we're supposed to do in a situation. We can't walk away and we can't approach. Now what's it going to be? Probably look up and think by yourself. Beam me up, Scotty. They made so many damn laws that even the police don't know anymore in what direction the target is allowed to move. So to be on the safe side they just pull the trigger until they hear the click followed by total silence. And Swissy did the same thing a couple of years back in a French town also called St. Louis where three Swiss cops illegally sneaked over the border and executed a Frenchman in France with 18 bullets in the back at point-blank range while his three months old son and his wife were sitting right next to him. There you can see it. Saint Louis. Saint Louis in Oran. And um, his name is Michel Hercouet. I think 28, I think he was 25 years only. Sad. Very sad. You can read the whole article if you please. Ah. It's indeed a Swiss speciality to shoot unarmed civilians in the back with an overkill on ammunition. Or does anybody think that Swissy just has a sensitive reaction to any town by the name of St. Louis? And because I contacted Rodolphe Hercouet, the totally heartbroken father of the young man, to offer my human compassion, the Swiss Octagon Police, together with their Nazi judiciary, want to put me in prison for that, which is actually going on today. And they had me arrested by Beat Meyer, one of those three killer cops, who threatened me, pushed me around, laid hand on his gun and locked me up, in a police cell, in the cell in the police cellars, for no legal reason at all. Beat Meyer plays the hero now in the main police station of Basel. Basel or Baal, the city of the Bank of International Settlements where the stolen savings of honest Americans went to after the Wall Street crash. So here you can see this charming tattoo on a, on a Swiss policeman's arm so this is what the situation is here and most of the time they don't show it at all you know they're very careful not to show anything to the outer world and you know to, to put it all under the carpet but these are the, are the worst racists and the worst fascists you can imagine the KKK was founded by Swiss settlers and Phileas Walder and Swiss Octagon and their police thugs are the biggest gang in town. We even sell arms and dope to the Crips and Bloods so they can destroy each other and reason a police state in the Senate. So I made this film here. Uh, you see the Swiss cross on the Ku Klux Klan, you know, the Red Underground, the Templars cross from Switzerland. Well, this is Carolina, that's where the Swissies went to in the first place before the Civil War. And, uh, well, I can't see it anymore here, because it's all, um, um, it's all blocked here in Switzerland. It's all, uh, the, the Swiss censorship. So, but there are a lot of other people. This is my, my video. But you can see it if you punch 
KKK in my channel here, you can still see it. But there's a lot of other good women who take this over. You know, you see Switzerland and the Swiss bankers, KKK. Here the Swiss KKK burn black women. And uh, here the, the, it's a, there is even a shoe, it's called KKK Swiss. You know, etc. Here it says KKK Swiss, etc, etc. So you, so you just punch Swiss KKK in, uh, in YouTube, like here, and it will pop out. I mean, I, in this video here, I, I gave all the proofs that uh, the KKK is from Switzerland. And they still practice it here, very much. And remember, my black brothers, how more than two million whiteys of the Union Army fought for your freedom and against that Nazi Templar slavery from Octogon. So this is a real picture from that time here. You see the Swiss cross here? The same you saw on all these Templars things here? And this is red. And this is white. You can see it's white. Here's another one. The Swiss are behind slavery and the, uh, the Confederates. They, they instigated the Civil War, the US Civil War. They financed Adolf Hitler, this, the First World War, the Thirty Year War. They're behind everything. All these wars and crimes against humanity, they're all Swiss Templars, Nazi Templars from Octagon. The proofs are all here. And be aware, there are black traitors to their own race, as Mr. Captain Ron Johnson here in Ferguson, constantly signaling the New World Order Triangle to his Mason pals, dreaming to become a police general, oppressing his own people. Smart move from the FBI think tank to show the only Afro policeman around to do the smart, the smart talk, while 10,000 white octagoners in uniform roam the streets around Ferguson in search for more, some more victims and deliberately discrediting the entire white race in order to create a race war instigated by that octagon enemy within from the Alps. You can see him he, he, in a two-minute interview. He did about twenty times giving this the the uh, signaling and folding his hand into the uh, the pyramid triangle as Masons do, pretending to be nice, having a sweet voice. Well, that's what they always do, you know, have a sweet voice. It's about they they say, uh, don't be loud and don't shout. It's our actions that count. You know, so they just killed some black people, and now they come with a nice and sweet voice, and, oh yes, I understand what you mean, but, 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 you know. You see, they're all doing it, here and here, even Mr. Hitler, well, this is my video, actually. <laughs> uh, you know, here in another way, this one here, well, she's doing it all the time, here, here, in another way, here, doing the all-seeing eye. There's also from my video I showed this. Here, 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 you know, it's, it's, uh, they're all throwing the satanic symbols here. Uh, and it, this police officer, he did it about 20 times in a two minute interview. Throwing the satanic hand. So his satanic pals. Even the Beatles that do it. Uh, here and here, you know, that. Uh, this is the M symbol. Well, here, you know, here, this one here, she's doing it all the time. All the time. She's not doing anything else anymore. Well, so this is what the uh, the police traitor, what the, uh, the enemy within, um, what he's into, you know. We have to identify that enemy within before it's too late to avoid the second US Civil War on the agenda coming up right now. And just as the 1860 or 1861 to 1865 Civil War, it all started in Missouri with an event called the Missouri Compromise in 1920. Because Missouri is the most northern state of the Confederates, which lies in Union territory actually which we call in the military an enclave. And enclaves are, per definition, 
a source of trouble that leads to many wars and civil wars, as the US Civil War, more recently the Balkan Wars, and of course the Gaza enclave, uh, which can be seen as an enclave of the larger Muslim world closed in behind a huge wall. So here we can see the events leading to the American Civil War and here's the Missouri Compromise. Uh, I think it's one of the most, um, the, the most important events that led to the US Civil War. And it, so, you know, the, these guys, these masons, pharaohs, they, they have their ways, you know, to, to choose the, um, a special place or a special number, you know, it's all after numbers and, and symbology, you know. Well, this is in Wikipedia. Uh, I don't see it. Huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so here are the... Um, the free slave uh, staters, and this is Missouri, you know. These are the Confederates, you know, the, the pink states here. You can see all around Missouri, it's, uh, free, um, it's, it's freedom territory of the Union. Well, the Union was more like here. What's this? It's changing all the time. So, and that was before the Swissies came and live in the, in the Swiss belt. They actually started, they waited until the end of the civil war and then they occupied it so now we have a status quo where it's they it's it's theirs now the the, the confederate states are not only the southeast anymore but they have extended now it's all around missouri and this is quite important the the missouri compromise uh, I, I i don't think we can understand the the happenings now in uh, Ferguson, Missouri, if we don't understand this, it's all related. So there's no doubt at all that the Missouri location for the next civil war has been carefully chosen and planned, just as the events of the Missouri Compromise led to the slaughter of 1861 to 1865, about Missouri being one of those typical slave states in Union territory as an enclave. Well, it's not entirely an enclave, you know, because here it's connected with the, uh, so this is Missouri, here it's connected to the uh, Confederates, but uh, uh, we do call it an enclave, even if it's not entirely an enclave, because the Union is all around, you know, and here is, uh, but, but now this is the Swiss belt here, and this here, so now they have an enlarged uh, confederacy here. Just like the Swiss Confederacy. Oh yeah, they've been planning. They haven't told us yet, but they are in a war. They never stopped. But ethnically speaking, things have changed since then. Before the Civil War, Swissy predominantly immigrated into the Confederate States as North and South Carolina, leading to the foundation of the Ku Klux Klan by Albert Pike and his Swiss pal Phileas Walder. Or see my film about it. But after the Civil War, Swissy massively immigrated into the Swiss belt. So I read it for you. This, this is quite, this is very important. Before the year 1820, some estimated 25,000 to 30,000 Swiss entered British North America. Most of them settled in regions of today's Pennsylvania as well as North and South Carolina. In the next years, until 1860, about as many Swiss arrived, so that's 50,000, making their homes mainly in the Midwestern states, such as Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, and Wisconsin. Well, this is the Swiss belt. 50,000 came between 1860 and 1880, and some 82,000 between 1881 and 1890, and estimated 90,000 more during the next three decades. So there you see, Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Wisconsin, Missouri, and, uh, um, you know, this is where they went to, you know. So roughly before the Civil War, they went to North and South Carolina, instigating the war with the Ku Klux Klan and Albert Pike, who talked about it. And um, then they waited until just right after the Civil War, 
And they came into the Swiss belt of Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Wisconsin and the rest. And these are proofs, people. And from 1860 to 1890, 100,000 Swissies settled down in the Swiss belt, reproducing like rats. Where large families with 10 or 12 children were no exception in those early days. So those 130,000 new Swiss settlers became 1 million in one generation only. Therefore, comparable to the Swiss dreams of a grand Switzerland today with some incorporated states from Germany, France, Italy and Austria. See my other film about it. We must picture the new Confederate States of America as an enlarged entity, including the entire Swiss belt now. So this is in Illinois, which is the fifth Swiss, Swiss American state, uh, where there's Lake Zurich. <laughs> Probably a lot of money as well. And why do you think they show the pyramids? You know, the Sisters of Isis. Races. Well, lovely. Races and Hitler-type, Nazi-type letters. Well, real charming, isn't it? Just right to uh, Ferguson, you know. Hmm. And they've been quietly preparing right under our noses and now all of a sudden storming the streets and all their shining new Space Wars equipment and lethal new toys and definitely financed by the Swiss Nazi banks from the motherland in the Alps. And I hope for moral backup from the public opinion just as in that good old Nazi era with equally brand new shining black uniforms and equipped with new Nazi gear miraculously furnished by unknown factories like out of nowhere. Same thing happening now. And then too, the Swiss finance it all. They finance Adolf Hitler. And this is why Obama waited two full weeks to interfere. As they know now that the blast will come out of the other end of the gun. Because Americans and the world are disgusted with it. So now Obama will try and save his presidency as the coup didn't really work the way they hoped. Now let's have a look at the 1860 Civil War to identify today's enemy and avoid their next civil war. Now they've got the FEMA camps ready for us just as Swissy and their confederates like the motherland is also called the Confederacy, had concentration camps in the US where Union soldiers were tortured and murdered. Swiss-born Captain Heinrich Wertz was the camp commandant of the Andersonville concentration camp in the Confederate state of Georgia. Wertz was a doctor like Swiss Dr. Mengele and he had 13,000 inmates like this one here murdered and 45,000 tortured and after the war Swissy was hanged by the Union for conspiracy and murder. Just as the Swiss state and the banks they pleaded guilty of conspiracy this year in 2014 and just as Swissy, they are building three concentration camps for immigrants, for resilient immigrants, as they say, right now in Switzerland in 2014. So, well, th these are the sort of FEMA camps coming up, you see. Well, here it is, the concentration FEMA camp of the uh, during the Civil War. Here it says, Major... Well, they, they made him a major in the end, that's true. Henry Wirtz. Well, his name was Heinrich. And he was Swiss. They always, they, they changed their names, and, like into an English one, you know. Even their last names, yeah. So you can see that picture again. I just showed it to you. You can... There it says, a Union soldier who survived. Well, where did I see this again? Yeah, in Auschwitz, you know, financed by the Swiss. And protecting Dr. Mengele after the war, you know, in Switzerland. Yeah. Well, 
There he is, Heinrich Hartmann Wertz. Jawohl. Better know him as Henry Wertz. Well, I, I better know him under the name Heinrich. He was a Swiss-born Confederate officer. He came to the U.S., you know, to kill and murder 13,000 people and to waste another 45,000. Here he is with this pharaonic sash. It's probably red or blue as always. Probably wants to to, to just shift his hand under the under the thing, just like a uh, like a mason. He was born in Zurich, Switzerland. He had a medical career. He was a doctor, just like Dr. Mengele. Oh, the Swissies, they love these sort of things. Yeah, for the Confederate Army, just like the Swiss is a, uh, is a Confederate country, a Confederacy. A Confederacy. Well, Camp Zumpta. Well, that sounds very German, eh? Oh, here's his grave with the Templar's cross. What do you know? I'll put in the link for you. You can read it yourself. This is American history, folks, and it's... This is important as well. Champ Ferguson. You know who that is? He was a real killer, a confederate killer, you know, he killed women and children and burned them alive and stabbed them to death. Like in, like in Missouri, Ferguson. Go and have a look at it. It's interesting. Here, it's on the Swiss website. On the top, in the top left, it says, Berühmte Schweizer im Amerikanischen Bürgerkrieg. So, Berühmte Schweizer, that means famous Swiss. You know, like Captain Heinrich Wertz, the Kampfkommandant who murdered 13,000 people and tortured them. So, he's a famous Swiss. Well, the Swiss love these sort of people, yeah? And, I mean, look at it, I tell you. All the, uh, the Nazi Kampfkommandants, you know, in the, of the concentration camps, they all come came from the uh, vicinity of uh, uh, near, like near Switzerland, in the Alemannic, um, the Alemannic provinces in, in Bavaria, where it's not really Bavaria, from Austria, from the Alps, they all came from around Switzerland, believe me. So in Switzerland, they're heroes, you know, they're famous, as they say here. Yeah, there was only one, like here, there's only one who fought for the, um, for the Union. And uh, this is a Jew's name. He was not really Swiss. No. And the rest, are all, you know, they're generals. You know, go into the war, kill them, you know, and I'll stay here. And there were majors and captains and officers who came specifically to the United States to kill and murder and rape and torture just as they did in Nazi Germany see my other vids about that well here's a letter some camp commandant of a FEMA camp wrote to me I even have a case number here FEMA contact contact us or US I don't know dear Sean it says over the years there have been many myths or rumors well you spelled it wrong guys surrounding FEMA and I'm glad I have the the chance to set the record straight with you well how did I how did they I, they didn't do anything you know I didn't see anything there's absolutely no truth to these rumors they are nothing more than conspiracy theories oh, dear Sean well, they're, prob they're probably like my videos yeah yeah <laughs> Thank you once again for your interest in the agency, uh, the cocaine agency. Oh. Weird, eh? Oh, yeah. Okay, so first they say, like, they start like, dear Sean, you know, and there's absolutely no truth to the conspiracy theories. 
you know, we're so nice and friendly. If you look under the letter, you know, it says, any misuse or un unauthorized disclosure of this letter, well, this, I just did it, may result in both civil and criminal penalties. Well, go ahead. If you receive this document in error, oh, please destroy the, the document will destroy itself in five seconds. <laughs> the, the Privacy Act procedures. Well, it's, it's my letter to me and I can do with it what I want, eh? So, uh, there's some more. <laughs> it may contain privacy sensitive information. Please contact 911. Well, I know enough about your 911. <laughs> your 911 inside jobs, false flags. Don't start with that, will you? Then there was Swiss born Captain Heinrich Hatze of the Confederate Army and the Jesuit who wrote some Nazi book called The Moral and Intellectual Diversity of Races and publishing a newspaper for the elite called The Index very much reminding us of the Inquisition and the Pope's Swiss Guard The Index of the, of the Inquisition Well this is in German, unfortunately you can probably find it in English somewhere um, I'm a bit too lazy. It says here, the moral and intellectual diversity of races. And um, here it says, a Jesuit school. And he was born in Zurich, 1834. Who also came a space... Well, this, all these... this publicity, it's... it's the killing uh, the internet with all this publicity lately. Swiss American Brigadier General John David Imborden of the Confederate Slavery Republic who later became the Camp Commandant of the Aiken Prisoners of War Camp in South Carolina. Charming fellows they are. See, uh, here it says Imborden and uh, he was in the Parliament of Virginia. Uh, you know, they always go to, for all the, uh, the key positions. In Aiken, South Carolina, you probably find this in English somewhere. I'll put it in the link for you. And there he is, Swiss General Imborden of the Confederate Army. Uh, he was born in the US, a Swiss American. Can anybody tell me why he puts his hand underneath here like Napoleon? Well, another Freemason in Parliament. Swiss, he goes for all the key positions to terrorize the true Americans and kill the American dream. Well, he looks a bit cross-eyed too. <laughs> and there was Swiss American Brigadier General Felix Kirk Tolikova, all fighting for the Confederates and many a Confederate flag can be seen in Switzerland today as I've shown in one of my other films. So here you can see he was um, he uh, published the Columbia Observers and, uh, and some other newspaper, the Nashville Banner, and he came together with Christoph von Grafenried. You know, he went to New Bern in North Carolina. That's what I told you before. They all went to Carolina. And uh, yeah, well, read it yourself. And of course, this is just the tip of the iceberg. I mean. There were um, tens of thousands or thousands who were fighting and uh, these are just some generals and just the tip of the iceberg. You know. There were many, many more and mostly like into, you know, twisting people's heads, you know. Uh, he was... Um, he was even the, the general attorney in, um, in Nashville. And he was in the Senate as well, in Tennessee, and in the District Nashville, in the U.S. Congress. Uh, they go for the key positions, and they got the key positions into the presidency, into the White House. Obama, Eisenhower, uh, Herbert Hoover, 
the director of the of the FB lie gay Edgar Hoover for half a century and there are many more of whom we don't even know a natural question would be of the 50,000 Swiss immigrants into the Swiss belt from 1840 to 1860 had to fight for the Union no because the Union introduced the draft only in the late 1963 and for $300 you could buy yourself out or find a substitute and of 2,100,000 Union soldiers, only 2% were conscripts. And because the just arrived Swissies into the st still Union Swiss belt couldn't speak English yet, most certainly no Swissie fought for the Union for the cause of ending slavery. Well, that just doesn't fit Swissie's nature. And the Swiss did the same thing again in Switzerland with American U.S. airmen in three Swiss concentration camps of four POWs during the Second World War, where they got tortured and murdered. See my video about it. These people will never stop. So why furthermore did Octogon choose Ferguson and not some place 20 miles down the road? Well, Ferguson was founded in 1855, just six, year, six years before the Civil War, an entirely white town with black slaves having to build it. And in 1990, the demographics count 75% white against 25% black, and only one generation counting 20 years. In 2010, the demographic situation was entirely the other way around and only 29% white for 70% black. And of course in a former slave state in confederate territory this creates hatred. So they had to change the rule of rules of engagement for the police. It's understandable that people who don't recognize the town they were brought up in anymore that they feel unhappy about it. But it's unacceptable to blame others for the consequences of their own crimes. I mean, you confederates brought them there in the first place in chains and shackles, didn't you now? So, take the consequences of your own crimes against humanity without fooling the world through those eternal Swissy Octagon Nazi Templar lies.